How can you improve your click-through rate in the emails? In this video, I'll show you seven ways how you can do it. Hi, this is Andre, the founder of Long Email Marketing Agency, as this YouTube channel. If this is first video on our channel you're watching, please subscribe. It helps our channel to grow. So today I would like to discuss seven ways how you can improve your click-through rate. And please do not confuse click-through rate with click rate. There's another video I recorded discussing what's the difference between two terms, but click-through rate ensure it's a percentage of people who open your email and they click on your call to action or click anywhere in the email. So first I will discuss seven general techniques that you need to follow and then seven things you should test, split test in your campaigns or in your automations and show you examples. So the first one, it's a great rule of thumb is to have a one call to action per email. So if you're selling something, you should call them out saying like, hey, buy this products do not include multiple call to action i have another video called five email design mistakes and what the common mistake people use is they add menu style website menu style in their email under their logo at the top and it defeats the purpose of email because people are confused where they click so they lose interest and they just close your email archive or delete or unsubscribe so the goal is to have one call to action in your email second general idea is to personalize your email so do not send one email to all for example if you have customers buyers versus non-buyers so you should send them different kind of emails with different call to action for somebody who already your customer you can say buy again versus somebody who's not customers you can say something buy now so those are just their poor example but you understand that call to action can be customized also if you using email marketing software like Clavio, you are able to include two call to action but show only one per depends who they are general idea number three is location of a cta do not hide it like at the bottom of the email try to maybe to put it in few places maybe at the top in the middle and at the bottom if it's very long form of the email general idea number four is to make your cta mobile responsive what i notice a lot that people are using images as a cta and they do not optimize for mobile so when you check on the desktop it looks amazing and looks cool design is cool but when you check on mobile it's very 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 small and not readable so make sure your CTA optimized for mobile also make sure your emails are have proper layout so just imagine like triangle so pointing down so person needs to scroll and your email should lead to the CTA again back to the example about bad uh, design emails people are putting too many calls to action in the header of the email so it defeats the purpose and your email does not point down to the CTA when you're scrolling down and two more general idea general tips are uh, make sure your emails are simple do not over complicate it uh, you know you receive those newsletter from or newsletter or catalog where it, like pharmacies or your local store like put us many products on their uh, newsletter sometimes people use the same technique for their emails they put as many products they can as many call to action they can and it's too busy there's no time for a person to check everything out it's not clear so they just delete archive or skip and move on make sure it's very simple and was one or fewer call to action and the last thing is it track your click so heat map we have a how to track a person click where they click in the email we call it heat map there's another video on that but the idea here if you have the same link in the email three times you need to understand where they're clicking because right now majority of the email marketing software not able to tell you so we have a workaround of that but you need to understand because uh, just giving an example one company we work with they have very long email but what we find out that 80 percent of people are clicking in the first part of the email so the rest of the email is useless but they invest a lot of money and time in developing those emails so those are general seven ideas but right now i will switch to my computer and i will show you seven things you can split tasks 
in your emails to improve click-through rate. Okay, so now let's start from the first one. I call it relevant CTA, meaning depends who your audience are. For example, this is a great example for a short company called Chubby's. As you can see, their CTA is not shop now, buy now, shop collection. They have like just for fun fact number four. So it sparks curiosity and it's relevant to their audience because they know their audience and they send this kind of CTAs to them. So people are more likely to buy because it, they can relate. If you are like female oriented brand, maybe there's some words which will work for women versus men and you know how to use those CTA. So try to avoid something like shop, uh, buy, new collection, like try to come up with a creative ideas like Chubby's have, or like this one, the next call to action, short, short, long summer, or sky out, tie out, it's relevant to their audience, or go, go, go. I mean, it's a simple um, call to action, go, but you see they are repeating and it looks fun. Take me to the hoodie. So as you can see, they like they introduce fun in their call to action, but it does work. Spark curiosity. Okay. So here's a, a last crumb a cookies, a cookie brand, cookie subscription brand. And they have instead of just regular waiting list or buy or something, they cookie me, please. Like the thing is it's they want to say like the proper way to say it is count me please but they playing with the word cookie me which sparks curiosity they want to check it out what do they mean and and so forth another one uh niam soul you see like find my soul the call to action i mean they have like a very um, unique audience and they are like soul oriented the spiritual things yoga um, workout so that call to action is very appropriate for their audience and it's like spark curiosity as well like what do they mean by spark my soul? So, I mean, right now they just uh, redirecting to the collection page, which on that team, like spiritual, hippie style and all of that. So those are two examples of how to spark curiosity. Okay, so image and gifts. This is uh, example number three. You want your hero uh, to either point out on call to actions or create some kind of gif which uh, show people where to click. I did not find great e-commerce examples, but the one I found is from Fiverr. Let me just find it. So here's from Fiverr. As you can see, we are open, open now. So it's basically, it's mimic my amounts and like not forces me, but like I just want to repeat that action and click on that image. This is one thing. And the second thing is landing page. I did not find the email as an example, but here's an example of in a landing page. You see that lady is looking on the form call to action. So you, when you open this page, the first thing you look at that lady and second, like what she's looking for at. And now you see where she's looking at and it um, leads people to click. However, here's the big thing, which not in my list, but also important. All call to action in the US and majority of the country should be on the right side, not left, because we are reading from left to right. If you're in a country where you do business, where people read the other way, so make sure like to include call to action on the left side, but it's better always to put it on the right side. Okay, so we have that. Time sensitive and we are back to last crumb let me just close all those okay so last crumb okay i've i lost it but i found it again so here's the last crumb uh, and as you can see they have a time counter of course it's already out they also have the time here and it's like blinking and again this is the same email i showed you before like cookie me please but this is time sensitive so that's why it urged people to take the action you're asking them right now so call to action we want to include in especially for longer emails we want to include call to action in multiple location yeah so this is a uh, or hu kitchen and as you can see they have a call to action shop now i would personally word it differently but anyway it's i want to show you this example because they have multiple call to action you can see they have a here shop now and here shop now and i bet it will have 
higher click-through rate than any other email with a single uh, call to action. Typically, a majority of companies, they will remove this call to action and will have only this tool to call to action and this will look like that. So this is just good example. And another one is Flow. So this is Flow. It's a new brand that I just learned about today. So they have a shop flow to here call to action and another one here. The call to action does not stand out. So I would say I would recommend for them to pop their call to action because right now it's like in a line with everything else and people might miss it. Okay, so direction. As I said in a general, general ideas or tips about improving click-through rate, direction of the email is important. So you want to guide people. You want to tell them what to do. So here's one example from Smart Suite. By the way, when I said about bad not to do multiple call to action in email, this is what I mean. Like those thing, two things are extra because it creates too many call to actions and it's bad for emails anyway. So as you can see, it's like six free bags of sweet fish, just pay shipping. You see, this is how I see my email. So it sparks curiosity. Okay, number one. Okay, I want to see what's next. Number two, number three. So you are guiding people step by step and then like shop now so like one two three shop now one two three shop now another email black oak led they just do it not one two three but they do it, do it with error and subconsciously we want to see what's next because it's the arrow is pointing down and, and we are like okay i got you and I mean, of course you can click or not click, but this kind of email will have a higher click to rate than any other emails. Text colors. Okay, another thing you should split test. By the way, all those things that I just described and showed you example, it doesn't mean you have to do it that way. This is just ideas for you to split test in your campaigns. So try to, for example, like for sparking curiosity, like will include something unique for your brand versus something like shop now and see what kind of different you have for time sensitive one email like no timer and another with a timer and see what results they have okay so about the text color as you can see hugberry they use typically all hyperlinks or links in text is blue underlines as a standard however as you can see they modify it change the color and font to match their brand and it pops so this is call to action. So you should play with colors. Ezra Firestone, who is owner or co-founder of Boom Cindy Joseph, in one of his training videos said that they tested uh, blue underline versus pink and he thought it will not make a difference, but pink had such a higher click-through rate that he was shocked and they kept it pink and for until now they use pink color in all hyperlinks and this is another company nona limb very simple email i like it everything is good and as you can see they have their uh, link uh, color links like different color as well okay so those were seven general ideas that you need to do to keep as well as seven ideas and example how you should split test it there's no set in stone rules for high click-through rate you might have different brand you might have different audience you might be in the different industry you might be in different season let's say in the christmas season it might work like red and white color might work with some snowflakes in another season something else might work so it's nothing set in stone so you should always split test and we have another video on how to properly split test you need to create a hypothesis of your split test you need to run it split test collect the data make a conclusion and on that conclusion you need to make next steps there was seven ways how to improve your click-through rate in case you have any additional questions please let me know i'll leave them under this video and please subscribe and share it with your friends it helps us grow thank you